Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now, today I've got a really interesting dish that I've been trying, I've been looking forward to make for quite a while. Those of you, those of you who may remember, back at, uh, at Christmas, I uh, had a, a meal with my family, a Christmas meal, and one of the stars of that particular meal, my, my sister made some vegan ice cream. And when we tasted it, we were amazed at how totally unvegan it tasted. Really? You weren't told. You, there's no way on earth you would have known that it was a vegan ice cream. It was creamy. It was rich. It was unbelievable. And I've been trying to get an opportunity to make the ice cream ever since. Today is that day. So today we're going to make aquafaba vegan ice cream. Before we get started, just do me a quick favour. Click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon so you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. Okay, let's get to it. To make our unbelievably creamy vegan ice cream, we need just a few ingredients. First of all, we need three quarts of a cup of aquafaba. That's the juice from chickpeas. We need some vanilla essence. We'll be using about a tablespoon, a teaspoon of cream of tartar. My ice cream is going to be a strawberry flavor, so I've got some strawberry essence. One cup of icing sugar. Quarter of a cup of sunflower or vegetable oil. One cup of soy milk or any other plant-based milk of your choice, plus about 150 grams of strawberries. Equipment-wise, you'll need a glass bowl, an electric whisk, and a juicer. So before we get into it, let me just remind you what aquafaba actually is. I've done two recipes now where I've explored the properties of aquafaba, and one uh, where I've explained exactly what aquafaba is. Aquafaba is simply uh, the bean, the juice, or the water from beans, and in particular, chickpeas. So aqua means uh, water, and faba uh, refers to the bean. So I've got one video, and I'll, and I'll post a link to it up there somewhere, or there, I'm not quite sure which way, uh, where I show you how to make aquafaba from scratch, if you wish, uh, from actual chickpeas. And I have another video where I compare the properties uh, the whisking uh, properties uh, or the meringue making properties of aquafaba versus egg whites. So it's quite exciting to see how just how versatile something like bean juice can be. And what makes bean juice for me really exciting is because typically speaking, before I discovered what aquafaba was, the bean juice is something you typically just drain off and throw away. So when you buy a can of chickpeas, uh, it comes in already in water, and it's that water which is usually poured off, which is what we're using uh, to give these amazing aerating properties so that's quite exciting for something that would normally be thrown away to suddenly be such a become such a versatile food cooking element that's really quite exciting so without any further ado okay let's get to it now if you've seen the previous video where i compared the properties of egg whites versus aquafaba you'll be familiar with this particular part of the process because now we're going to whip up our aquafaba or our bean water hopefully into what looks like meringues. Now this takes, this you have to be doing this about a good five or six minutes until it starts to really fluff up uh, like meringues. It should be quite a stiff mixture. So I'll get it going and then I'll, we'll pop back when it's done. Look how well it holds its shape. So we can see denatures in a very, very similar way to egg whites. Isn't that interesting? Look at that. Now a good tip is when making meringues, whether using aquafaba or using egg whites, is to use a bit of cream of tartar. That's typically what we use to help give foams a bit more stability. So I'm gonna add about half a teaspoonful in this mixture and that should strengthen our foam. I'm gonna beat that in. Look at that, incredible. This is bean juice, people. 
stuff that would normally be thrown away. Look at it, incredible. So flexible, there's gonna be a lot of dishes we make with this. I think you can make whipped cream with this, uh, a double cream type thing, it's, it's so flexible. Next up, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of vanilla essence, because that's gonna be the main flavor of this particular ice cream, vanilla essence with some strawberry. So I'm gonna add a, about a spoonful of vanilla essence and then whisk that in. Right, next, I'm going to add in the sugar. Now, you can use caster sugar uh, for this, um, but I'm going to use some icing sugar. It's quite fine, and will keep the mixture quite light. So I'm going to add and whisk in at the same time. So there we have, you can see a really light cream mixture. You can see how well it's holding its shape. I mean, look at this peak here. It's, it's trapped air and aerated really, really well, easily, as well as egg whites, which is incredible. Okay, now this next stage really couldn't be simpler. Here's where we add the main flavor for our particular ice cream. Now you can add whatever flavor you like. It could be chocolate, it could be peanut butter, it could be anything you want. But for this, I'm going to use strawberries. I've got a little bit of strawberry essence. This particular one was, um, was sent to me by a company called Special Ingredients. They do some really, really interesting flavors. So all we're gonna do is pour our milk, I've used a soy milk, but you can use whatever milk alternative you like. Our oil, put in our strawberries. A good squirt of our strawberry essence. What we do next is blend. Now, to give my ice cream a little bit more strawberry flavor, I'm just gonna chop up some actual strawberries and then mix them in to the overall flavor of the ice cream. So we have the ice cream flavor plus actual bits of fresh strawberry in there as well. So it's a great way to get some additional fruit into a meal, even the dessert. All too often when we have strawberries, it's a, it's a very, very processed strawberry, like either in a jam. So we get the essence, but we don't get any of the goodness. This way, at least we get some of the fresh strawberries themselves actually in the dish. So here we are. This is gonna be the main part of our dish. So I'm gonna pour it in. So the mixture's in, and I'm gonna stir it through. Now it's important when you're stirring it through that you don't destroy or knock out all that lovely air you spent all that time putting in. Because that air, that helps make our strawberry ice cream really, really light and also spreadable, sorry, and also scoopable straight from the freezer. Now normally with ice cream, you have to let them defrost for a while. But with this particular ice cream, you can scoop it, because of all the air that's trapped in it, you can scoop this ice cream straight out of the freezer. Next, so it tastes a lot like ice cream already. It tastes like softened ice cream. Next, I'm gonna put it into a container and freeze it for about four hours. All right, we have our container. Let's get our ice cream in. So we're gonna pop this in the freezer and pop back in about four hours time. Okay, our ice cream's out of the freezer now. I left it in overnight in the end just to make sure it's solidified well. And let's have a look what we've got. Well, what we do have for starters is because of all the air that was whipped into the aquafaba, uh, then we have an ice cream that can scoop straight out of the freezer. With most ice creams, you have to leave them to, to, to melt a little bit before you can scoop them. 
because of all the air this one can scoop straight out of the freezer. But as always, proof of the pudding, we know by now in the eating. So let's have give it a taste. I'm gonna talk texture first. First of all, texture wise, it's light and smooth and creamy. It's light, smooth and creamy. Really light. It's a, probably the lightest ice cream I've ever had. Some ice creams can be a little bit heavy, but this one is really, really light. Mm. Very, very quick melt in the mouth. So, so far so good. It's creamy and it's light. Taste-wise now, oh. strawberries coming through really well. Um, it's, it's also little chunks of strawberry in there, which again you can stop and chew on. This is an absolute... Let me be real with you. If you made this yourself and did a taste test and someone didn't know you made it, one, they wouldn't think you could make it. Two, they wouldn't know it was vegan either. This does not taste like a vegan ice cream. If I just gave someone some ice cream and they would come to eat it, there's no way on earth they would know this was vegan. really good so there we have it beautiful smooth creamy light totally dairy tasting vegan ice cream once again thanks for watching food tech 101 remember to like share and subscribe food tech 101 is now on facebook and instagram so you can follow us there too as always my name is Mr. Lybird, but you can call me Sir.